So today I'm just going to cover uh, a little bit about uh, the tactical workshop on uh, how to put together a uh, marking plan. Just a little bit about myself. I started in the mortgage broking industry in 1997. In 2012, um, Mario Borg and I started up a new business called Masters Broker Group. And that group really counted on um, mentoring and coaching mortgage brokers to become successful. So we do have a track record of helping mortgage brokers uh, becoming successful. And a lot of the stuff I will be going through uh, today is actually similar to the information that we uh, use to help our mortgage brokers become successful as well. So today, we're going to cover a few areas. Uh, number one, the fundamentals of marketing. Uh, we're, we're just going to cover briefly uh, what uh, they are. Uh, we're going to help you set your goals. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview about setting your goals, about your marketing plan. Uh, we're going to give you a takeaway, a couple of takeaways on how to put that uh, plan together. And also uh, how to monitor and measure and why is it so important to do that. So what is marketing uh, about? Um, you know, usually most uh, brokers look at marketing as a way of getting new customers. It's a bit more than that as well, uh, because we also look at it from the point of view of also retaining your existing customers. That's equally as important as getting new customers. And it's also a lot of change in the industry. As you are, if you have been practicing for a few years, you will know uh, lots of credit changes, lender changes, policy changes, even more important to, to uh, keep marketing. It is a never ending activity. So no matter whether you're new to the industry, you've just started out or an existing broker, all of us will have to continue uh, marketing. Yeah, it's a never ending race. So some fundamentals. Uh, number one, there's no secret sauce. Uh, there's no one magic ingredient. Um, well, if you do find that magic ingredient, unfortunately, it's still a secret. So to, success, uh, to succeed, you actually need to diversify your marketing activities. You just can't rely on one thing. You can't just say Facebook is it, or face-to-face you know, -face marketing, or word of mouth is it. You, know, you have to do more than one. And as uh, we, I mentioned before, change is constant. So even marketing trends, new technology may come in. So you might have to adjust to accommodate for that. Uh, you have to innovate. And the last thing to remember, really, is that the best marketer in your business is you. You are the best marketer. In fact, you, most of the time, if you're a one-man band, you are the only marketer in your business. So very important to remember that. Keep that uh, in mind, because you are the best there is. Uh, in terms of the focus, we try to keep our marketing um, not so much about the interest rate or the price of the product. As my business partner, Mario Borg, says, um, you know, uh, sell on advice, not on, um, on price. So the important thing is move away okay, from, from just about talking about interest rates. Sure, that's what your customer will end up anyway, because any mortgage broker worth their salt will uh, try to get their, their lowest uh, interest rate product, the most competitive product for your client. But it's not just about the interest rate. The key is, what is your customer buying from you? All right, that's the number one question we ask all our mentees. So as a mortgage broking business, you've got to start thinking, what is the value you're going to be providing your customer? What are they buying from you? Focus on their needs. Uh, their purpose, their goals, uh, what their wants are. The second thing is, what are the benefits of your service? And the third one is, where we talk about the style, I guess, the way our marketing style is about communication, not so much selling. All right? It's not about um, just saying, okay, buy this product because it's the best one for you. However, tell me more about what you are trying to achieve, what are your goals, what you're trying to do, and then let's see whether we can help you get there. So the first thing to start off with, what is your marketing goal? Uh, no point starting a marketing plan without a goal. What we suggest you do is pick one thing. What is the one thing you want to achieve? Okay, start up small. Keep it simple. It must be measurable and it must have a time constraint on it. You, know, you can't keep it on forever. So for instance, one example could be, I want to find more new customers and build a brand awareness for my business. One of the things I will do is to run a first on buy seminar by the 10th of March 2018, for instance. So that could be a goal for yourself. So start off small. After this session today, just write one down. Start off with one goal. Just one thing you want to do to achieve our marketing. And when you achieve it, you, you keep building on it. There a lot of the stuff we talk to uh, about in our marketing um, uh, sessions and our workshops uh, as well and, and what we teach our mortgage brokers 
is uh, we actually run almost uh, on a zero marketing budget. Uh, unfortunately, you and I most likely do not have a $5 million advertising budget that we can rely on. Uh, so we're going to have to do something different. We're going to be innovative. We're going to have to be, you know, think outside the square. We're going to have to be a little bit more uh, flexible in terms of how we approach it. So how do you put a marketing plan together with virtually zero budget? The first thing to do is start thinking about your big picture. All right? We always uh, suggest that you start thinking about why you started your business in the first place. Think about uh, what was the most important thing uh, for you to start this mortgage broking business. What's your belief? You know, why is it important for you to do this? Uh, because that will translate um, your, the, the type of, um, or project or the type of marketing or the type of brand that you want to your customers to see. Okay? Because at the end of the day, it's like that Chinese um, proverb, uh, virtue comes before wealth. So work out what your belief is, what the big picture is, and that will slowly translate and project into the rest of your business. We have a uh, methodology, we call it the five-step marketing plan. And the way that our marketing plan works is, number one, work out who your customer is. Number two, what's the value you provide. Number three, build on those relationships. Number four, spread your message, get it out there. And the fifth one is encourage your customers to be advocates of your business, because when your customers are advocates of your business, you, you will find more and more customers will come to you. The methodology uh, um, of, of this five-step marketing plan, uh, the best way to describe it is like imagine you're going fishing. All right, what's the first thing you do when you go fishing? Most mortgage brokers, they say, all right, let's go fishing, grab the, the rod, grab the tackle box, walk down to the Yarra, throw the line in. Yeah, if we're lucky, we get a fish. If we're not lucky, well, there's always the fish and chip shop. The way we, we suggest you do is, if you are going to go uh, fishing, the first thing you should do is decide what sort of fish you want to catch. That's why we say, who's your customer? And derive, once you've worked out what sort of customer you want, what sort of fish you're going to catch, that will drive what sort of bait you're going to use, what sort of equipment you're going to need, where you're going to go fishing, all right? what sort of advice, what sort of knowledge you need. So you build a whole business around trying to catch that sort of fish. Same thing in mortgage broking. Once you work out the type of customer you want, you can build your whole business around attracting that sort of customer. You build infrastructure, blogs, newsletters, everything to attract that same type of customer. The other confusion is that just because you wanted a particular type of customer and you don't get it, doesn't mean that you should, say, throw the fish back in the, in the, in the pond, so to speak. You might be aiming for first-time buyers, but if you get an investor client, hey, they're still a customer. Okay? I'm not saying that you aim and focus 100% on one particular type of customer. The idea for this is just to maximize the probability you'll get that type of customer, not to just focus on the one thing. You will get other types of customers as you grow this business, but the important thing is pick one, start the, the uh, marketing activities, start uh, uh, getting some traction, and then slowly, slowly grow and build. So let's take a look at, at the individual uh, steps and, and try to expand on the steps a bit more. Who is your customer? What we suggest you do is to build a profile or persona of the type of customer you're looking for. So some of the questions you might want to, to think about is, what sort of customer do you want to reach? Okay, are they first home buyers? Are they investors? Uh, they could be in a particular profession. Could be pilots, could be doctors. Build a picture. What sort of goals are they trying to achieve? After all, this whole thing is about their, your customer. What are their wants? What are their needs? What are their concerns? How can you achieve, uh, help them achieve those goals? Okay? How can you, uh, if they're looking at the, uh, home ownership, how can you help them achieve their dream of home ownership? What solutions do you provide? And what sort of triggers you've got to think about that will cause them to start looking for your services? So go back to the, st the stage. You know? Just like we're going fishing, you've got to start thinking about what sort of customers that we're looking for. Also, where are they on their journey? Okay. Have they, they started looking or are they you know, down the track um, and they've been around or they've been doing research for years? Okay. Where are they on their customer journey? Try to, to figure where will you be uh, uh, for them. What's their preferred channels of communication? Now, what we're talking about here is are they on Facebook, LinkedIn? 
Are they on social media? Are they on uh, print media? What are they reading? Maybe they're in the magazines. All right. And to a certain degree, the type of customer you look for, it's going to be using a different type of communication channel. So for example, if I was going after uh, owner, driver, truck drivers, 99% of the time, they will not uh, be looking on their Facebook page all the time. Well, I hope they're not anyway, while they're driving at 100 kilometers away uh, down, down the um, Westgate Bridge. So you really need to think about the types of uh, channels that they're um, uh, uh, preferring to, to use. The third one is who are their influencers? Who do they listen to? Do they listen to their friends, the accountant, their solicitors, the real estate agent? Who, who, do, who influences them? Maybe their parents? And then what motivates them? Okay, are they looking for reward, status, um, you know, the fact that, or, or pride in achievement? So start thinking what uh, these things can do to help your customers. And when you do build a picture of your, your customers, it's going to make it easier for you to then also help um, to, to talk to your referrers. So your referrers will then know what you're looking for as well. If you like, there's a link there uh, on our website and Masters Broker Group website. We actually have some uh, forms and, and tools that you can uh, download. Uh, if you look at that link, uh, we actually have a customer profile worksheet that you can download. It's a PDF worksheet. You can download it, similar questions that what I've already uh, gone through, it's up there. Feel free to use it to build your persona for your type of customer you're looking for. The second one is your value proposition. So once you've worked out the type of customer you, you want to get, what are your customers going to get from you? What's the value you're going to be provided to, uh, to be able to provide to them? So what's our benefits? This is where we focus on the benefits that your business can provide. Uh, the value proposition, perhaps you have a unique selling uh, proposition. You've got some, uh, something that's better than the, the competition. And that's where we start talking about positioning your business in your particular market to try to attract those types of customers. In a way, the value proposition is also to help you differentiate yourself from the other uh, mortgage brokers out there. Yeah? If you consider there's what, according to the MFAA, there's something like 15 to 16,000 um, uh, members in the MFAA. That's a lot of um, members. You know? How do you, uh, are you going to, uh, to hear your, uh, make yourself heard above the noise? Why should I, I um, uh, choose you to be my, my broker? All right. So you've got to make yourself slightly different, and, and that's what we're talking about. Getting that value proposition out there to differentiate your business so that you are different from your competition. I mean, another example here, you can see what, um, I've got one here about Bridgestone, okay? All right, just to see what is it that Bridgestone sells. If you look at it, at the end of the day, Bridgestone is actually in the business selling tires. But yet, the way they're uh, advertising, the way they communicate to their customers, that's not exactly what they're selling. So have a look at their, their YouTube. Uh, if you go, and, um, go on to YouTube, just look up Bridgestone Hands Advertisement, you'll see that advertisement up there. Have a look at the advertisement, okay? Sure, they might be in the business of manufacturing and selling tires, but what is the advertising selling? So think about, use this as an analogy to think about what your business is selling. What is it that you are providing to your customer? Write down your value proposition, most important one. Put down a statement, okay? Because if it ain't in writing, it doesn't exist. And then build your whole service to service that customer, like I mentioned before. Put it on your website once you have uh, documented that, um, that value proposition. What's on social media? You know, put it everywhere. Even tell your referrers, yeah? And as I mentioned before, there's a free form. Oh, there's another form that we have where you can actually build up your value proposition as well. It's also on our website. Uh, on the right-hand side, if you click on uh, forms and tools, there's a, uh, at the bottom, there's a form where we actually, or a worksheet, I should say, to help you build a value proposition together. So again, feel free to download that second uh, worksheet to help you put that value proposition together. Third one um, is about um, building relationships. As uh, Stuart Weymouth, another very successful uh, connective broker, um, used to say, uh, mortgage broking is a contact sport. All right? You have no choice. Okay, we haven't got $5 million. We can't uh, rely on TV advertising like our, some of the, the bigger brands do. We have to do it another way. And one of the most uh, successful ways is to meet people, network. Okay, keep in touch with them. All right, we're talking about email newsletters. Uh, you can blog. In fact, we advocate uh, putting a blog together. 
run seminars, and again, the more people you meet, the more people you, 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 um, who know you, the more chances and more likelihood you're going to generate some business. Also about building awareness, that's what you're doing when you, you start building those relationships amongst your friends, family, and don't forget your existing customers. So as you start uh, selling loans, you're going to get more and more existing customers. They will become your best advocates. And don't forget your referral partners as well. It will also allow you to address any misconceptions about mortgage brokers, especially when we're talking about uh, the remuneration, um, um, com the Royal Commission that's going on there, and you know, what, what's going on in the industry. By you building relationships with those people, that's going to help project your message and your communication to, to help them uh, generate business for you. Most importantly, it's also about building trust, okay? Because we like to deal with people that we trust. And the last one is what we say, keep in touch, all right? Um, you know, keep them on your email newsletter list, your blog, social media. Uh, it's very important to keep in touch because they may not be ready to, to go now, they may not be ready to buy now, but they may be ready to do it later down the track. So keep in touch. Fourth one, uh, we talk about uh, spreading your message. Okay, as I mentioned before, today, I wish social media was around in 1997, it would make life so much easier. Um, but today we have social media, all right? It makes it easier to be noticeable, it makes it easier to share, it allows you to engage with your followers, um, and also think about how your customers are going to use that channel. Not everyone's going to be on Facebook, so do you need to be on LinkedIn, or do you need to be on another social media ch uh, channel like Snapchat or Instagram? The important thing is about how you're going to build trust in your brand. So take advantage of it. You know? Feel free to copy, see what other brands are doing, maybe emulate, take some tips from them, see what they're doing as well. Start a blog. We tell all our mentees uh, to start a blog. Write articles. Now, some of the questions earlier on uh, that I have is, um, you know, what do you write about? Well, my suggestion is you write about the things that interest your customers. So for instance, if I'm looking at um, first home buyers, well, write a blog about how to look for a house. What uh, should you be looking for when you go to an open for inspection? Um, you know, put a team of people around to, uh, you, like a conveyancer. Have you got a conveyancer yet? Talk about the buying process, how to bid at auction, stuff like that, all right? It can be written. I know some uh, brokers do a video blog as well. So again, yeah, whatever uh, suits you. If you don't like writing, you can you know, sit down in front of an iPhone with a microphone, start doing a video blog. Yeah, it's, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Keep it short, one to two minutes. Can work as well. We suggest also sending out an e-newsletter on a regular basis, all right? Preferably every fortnight, and so monthly. You want to keep top of mind. And like I said, write the blog that your, your target customers are interested in. Also keep a catch, a catch up with your key centers of influence. These are the people who are potentially referring business to you. Okay? We call them centers of influence because they're influencing their people or their followers to come to you. Keep in touch with them. All right? Have meetings with them, lunches, whatever. But you need to do something like that. The last one is maybe run an event, a seminar, first home uh, buyer seminar session or how to borrow to invest session. Okay? You can do it on your own. You can do it in conjunction with a real estate agent or a financial planner or an accountant. There, there are no rules that say you cannot do that. You, the important thing is to do something. The key is consistency, all right? If you're gonna do a blog, how consistently are you gonna be doing it? Okay, every two weeks, every month, all right? Because that same consistency also helps build trust. Timing and consistent communication, all right? Those are the three Cs we, we advocate if you're going to be uh, uh, marketing, keep them all co consistent. So remember, consistent message, consistent timing, and consistent communication. Examples, like I said, articles on your blog every fortnight. Newsletters, updates on Facebook, um, yeah, use Mercury marketing templates, they're all there, okay? Feel free to use them. Last one, make sure, don't forget, you can also call them directly, you know, to pick up the phone, have a chat to them. And if you do meet new contacts, remember to add them into Mercury because you need to keep their, their details on there so that you can keep in touch later on the track. You've got their email address, you've got their mobile, um, you know, and also their, their uh, Facebook social media uh, links. Keep them all in Mercury. Make it easy for yourself. The fifth one is to encourage customer advocates. 
you will eventually have customers who will use your services. You will settle their loans. They'll be very happy with your service. All right? They'll be more than happy to, to refer their friends and family to you. So word of mouth marketing is probably the most powerful, as you probably heard. It's also the cheapest. When I say cheap, it doesn't mean that you have to pay money, but it does uh, require a little bit of effort to continue to build that relationship. All right? So you're using a different type of currency here. We're talking about sweat, about uh, you know, building that relationship capital, as opposed to just mass blasting uh, advertising. A NAB survey in 2016 said that 49% of home loan applicants source their broker from a personal referral. All right? So very important. Ask for a review on social media. So if you have a customer that you've just done a loan for, ask them, hey, would you mind putting a review? To make it easy for them, copy the link to your review page on Facebook, for instance. Email it to them. Ask them to put up five stars, hopefully. Ask for testimonials as well. Okay? Put those testimonials on your website. They are also very powerful because it shows as social proof that you are legit. And make it an ongoing business process. Okay? And that's the key. All right? It's about that consistency, keeping it um, uh, consistent. And always have a call to action. No matter what, blog, email, whatever, always have a call to action at the end of it. All right? what, does, what do you want your customer to do after they've spoken to you? What do you want them to do after they've read your email? Okay? Call you or email you or message you. Measure, because if you don't measure, it's all wasted. So go back to your big picture. All right? Are all those five steps that we've spoken about, are they taking you closer to your big picture? Because if it's not working, it's not going to your big, uh, closer to your big picture, then adjust. You need to make a change. It's not working. All right? So know your numbers. So one of the metrics we use is how many people have you got in Mercury? The more people in Mercury, the more likely you're going to get referrals. We like to think of the thousand people in Mercury. Because the process to get to 1,000 people in Mercury means that you're going to have to do the first five steps to get there. And by the time you get to 1,000, I guarantee you, you'll be getting referrals week in, week out. Number of Facebook likes, yeah. Number of followers, again, it's a uh, proxy for how well your business is getting out there. But a like, as I say to my brokers, isn't a deal. Okay, it's just a like, it's just a measure. How many reviews, testimonials on your Facebook page? How many referrers? Or how many? The more important one is the last two. How many submissions are you making? And how many settles per month are you making? Because if you're doing all that work and not getting those settlements, then you need to make an adjustment. There are no rules. Here's some tips. There are no rules. You've got to think outside that square. Yeah, you heard that before. Because we have a zero budget, you have no choice. You have to innovate. You have to do something new, something different. Okay. You need to do everything possible, well, within legal bounds, of course, to make it happen. Yeah? Run an event. Okay? Well, you don't, you're not sure about speaking in, um, in front of people. Well, attend a public speaking course. Go join Toastmasters. Uh, one of my brokers said, oh, Andrew, I don't know how to write. Uh, well, go join a, a class. You can, you can get uh, short courses on creative writing or business writing. You know, do a course, maybe. Yeah? Learn something. Last one, make sure you measure and adjust. Okay? For blogs, uh, my suggestion is tell stories. Okay? Be different. All right? Facts, unfortunately, not so sexy. I should know because I'm, I used to be an engineer. Yeah? So tell stories. Be different. All right? Write for your customers. All right? What is it that they're interested in? What do they want to hear? And sometimes, uh, most of the time, we write our own articles. Okay? Some people say, uh, uh, brokers will come to me and say, Andrew, should I just buy my articles from somewhere else or not? Okay? So we suggest you, you write your, your own articles. Like I said before, there's uh, some worksheets out there uh, that you can uh, access from our website, from your ideal customers, uh, your value proposition worksheets. You can go to our website in the forms and resources tab, download them, and feel free to use them. The thing about all this is that there's actually three things when you think about it, what, why we're doing all this. Okay? To be successful, it's about who do you know? What do you know? And the last one, who knows you? Because if you get all three right, you will have a very profitable business. So just to summarize on what I've gone through uh, here today. Number one, focus on your big picture. What is it you're trying to achieve? We suggest you work on one goal first, okay? And then build up from there. Five steps, okay? Work out who is your customer. What value do you provide? What's your value proposition? Build relationships, okay? Keep in touch with your customers. 
put them on Mercury, put those systems in place, spread your message, get advocates, ask for reviews, all right? write blogs, e-newsletters, and encourage your customers to be advocates for your business. So hopefully, um, yeah, I've managed to help you out here in terms of teach, telling you about the fundamentals of, the, of marketing. Um, we've given you some guidelines about how to set your goals, given you some takeaways and practical uh, tips on how to go away and put up a strategic uh, marketing plan, and also how to monitor and measure. And, and remember, yeah, it's all about the big picture. Are you getting closer to your big picture? And um, I hope uh, you know, you've enjoyed today's presentation.